I patterned the scabbard around the sword. So basically this needs to be longer than the blade and wide enough so it wraps around the sword. I cut this out of 2mm EVA foam. Next, put your foam on top of a sheet of warbler, draw around it making it a bit wider and then you can use scissors to cut the warbler out. Repeat this again and then what you can do is you can sandwich the foam inside the two sheets of warbler. To do this you need a heat gun. The heat gun makes the warbler more malleable and it activates the glue so the warbler actually sticks to itself. All you need to do is continue heating all the way down there. You can use a wooden sculpting tool to press the edges together and then use scissors to remove the excess. Repeat this whole process once more so that you've got two sides. And now we're going to join these two together. So use the heat gun again and first of all join these two edges together. Now we want to really curve this round so I'm actually using a wooden dowel to do that just to guide it into a curved shape. I can then close the other side I press the edges together with my fingers after heating and work my way down. You'll notice I'm putting the wooden dowel inside it. I don't want the front of the scabbard to glue to the back of the scabbard so I'm trying to avoid it doing that because it does become quite malleable when hot. So I continue heating and shaping until I'm happy. You'll notice that there's quite a lot of bumps and things like that on the warbler. This is actually why I chose the warbler because if you look at Lagertha's scabbard it looks like it's been beaten up a bit and I thought warbler is perfect for that. Warbler also has a weight to it which I felt would be helpful to stop it moving about. So next I mark out this area here. This is basically where we're putting our strap and I want to find a way to keep that strap in place. So what I do is I take scrap warbler, heat it up roll it with my fingers until I get it to the thickness I want and then I use a heat gun to stick that on. And a steel rule and a wooden sculpting tool to help guide it into place. And then I put the second one on. These need to be wide enough apart to fit a strap inside there. Now we're going to wrap the scabbard with faux leather. You want to find a rough centre line on the back of the scabbard by measuring across adding points and joining them up. So I take contact cement and apply it to one side of that centre line. I also add contact cement to the wrong side of the faux leather. I then glue these together along the centre line that I've made. Just watch when you get to these little ridges here and just take your time. Now I continue the process on the other side. I cover that whole side with contact cement and I put contact cement on the faux leather and join these together. When you're gluing it's maybe a good idea to roll it round so that it becomes more even. You also want to glue it around the back towards the centre line and then once you've done that remove the excess with some scissors. You'll be left with a small amount of material that you need to remove so all I did for this was get a Stanley blade and very very carefully find where the two pieces of faux leather meet and cut that excess off and you'll have something that looks like this. Now the bottom of Lagertha's scabbard it kind of points so this bit was a bit tricky. All I did first was cut just around where I wanted the curve to be so I overestimated that curve. Then the parts that were left I turned them inwards and glued them together with contact cement. Once I'd glued that edge I then took some toy stuffing <laughs> and stuff the end with it. Next I then removed some of that excess faux leather and glued both those edges together. Now the end of her scabbard looks a bit more floppy like it does in the show. So this is a one inch piece of leather and when I got it I found that it was just a bit too light in colour. So all I do is apply some rubbing alcohol to take off any finish off the top. Then I took a black leather dye and just sprayed it all over it very lightly. And you can see the colour is now a lot better. To make the main strap for the scabbard, first of all I round one end. I've actually since created a pattern for these end parts of the strap. All you will need to do is really decide how long it should be. I measure in three quarters of an inch from the edge and make a dot in the middle. I then measure one and three quarter inches and put another dot, then repeat that again. 
Once you've marked out three, leave a five inch gap and then mark on the other three. Once you've marked out the holes, you then want to take a hole punch and punch holes that are just big enough for your saddler rivets to go through. There should be three on one side and three on the other and these should line up completely when you bend it. Before you rivet these together, remember to put your D-ring inside at the curve. Then you want to put your saddler rivet through one side. You want the part we're riveting to be visible from the front and you want the flat part of the rivet to be at the back. These rivets are likely way too long, so you'll need to cut them. You want them to be 1mm or 1.5mm above the leather. This gives you just enough material to work with to make these rivets. This is an 8 gauge fixing tool. You use the hollow side to push down the washer and then you use the domed side to finish the main rivet. If you hit it several times, it goes into a nice domed shape. Once you've got that strap made, we can move back to the main scabbard. We're going to add some leather three quarter inch straps that fit inside the ridges on the scabbard. So we want to connect these together. And what I actually do is just add in two holes on either side. Now use these markings and transfer them to the other strap so they match up. Punch those holes and put some simple double cap rivets through. Usually when you buy a set like this you would get a tool with it. So use the setting tool and set these two rivets. Now is a tricky part, you need to work out where they go on the other side. You don't want these to be too tight but you also don't want them to be too loose, they're meant to hold the scabbard in place. So what you can do is put it around the scabbard and then pull it as tight as you can and put markings. You can then take those markings off and rivet them. To finish the ends and connect it to the strap, all you do is curve them round and add two other rivets to set those in place. What I will say is you want to make sure that you can get this scabbard over your head. Another option is you could make this strap detachable. Lagertha has an animal skin around the scabbard in the show, but I've done something different. I used a pair of faux suede trousers that I had and all I did was wrap it around the middle. I then take this rope and I wrap that around too and I've just knotted it at the back. It obviously looks a bit too clean, so I go in with some dark brown airbrush paint. I then take black airbrush paint and really go in around the edges to make it look like it's dirty and it's been worn. To make the belt, start by rounding one side of your leather strap with a Stanley blade. From that, you want to measure in three quarters of an inch from the end and put a dot in the centre. From that dot, measure an inch across and put another dot. And then from that new dot, you're measuring in half an inch and putting in a dot there. From the third dot, measure an inch along and put a dot. And then you're reversing what you've just measured. So you're measuring in half an inch, then an inch. You should end up with six dots. Now we're going to punch through those holes. I've punched through every single one of the six holes that I've made. And it should look like this. The two holes in the centre is where the buckle is going to go, so we actually need to remove this material. So I'm marking two lines joining the edges of those holes. Now we can take the Stanley blade and cut those lines so we can then remove that material. You'll end up with something that looks like this. Now take your buckle and put it through the hole. Just make sure you've got it on the right way round. Now we're going to line up these other holes here and rivet through them to connect. Put your saddler rivet through so the flat part's on the back of the belt. So you're just going to rivet these ats before, get your washer, cut the rivet to size. If you have difficulty cutting them down to size, what you can actually do is use a file. So I used files on all of my rivets to get them down to about 1mm or 1.5mm. Get your washer and push that down with your setting tool and then use the domed side to set those rivets. So now you need to add the holes on the other side of the belt to get it to fit your body. I recommend putting the belt on and seeing where those buckle holes should be. I would do a quick temporary chalk marking with the costume on. Find the ideal hole of where it should be and then add two other holes on either side one inch apart. This means you've got an option to adjust if need be. I'm simply just adding five holes one inch apart, and then punching the holes with my hole puncher. 
Once finished, you'll need to leave enough material on the end so that you can wrap the end of the belt around itself. You may need to try it on before you do this. And then just cut it in a sort of rounded triangular shape. So that's the belt and scabbard complete. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for more tutorials.